Well, surprise, surprise, everybody. We got the, uh, the pre-production sample, and it's not even pre-production, it's a first sample of the actual print run for Mask of the Red Death, and I wanted to go ahead and take a minute to do a really bad uh, cell phone unboxing of the game. Uh, as you can see, it's got the red foil that we've mentioned, and that red foil goes all the way around. And the nice thing about a video is, uh, you can really tell how, how much it shines. Let's turn it off to the side here and see how beautiful that spine is. And the back, um, it's got a lot of uh, wear and tear from actually the way that it was basically packed in the box uh, coming over. Yours will not have this amount of grunge. Uh, these aren't protected super well when they come over in the pre-pros or in uh, the, the first shots because uh, they just get thrown into a cardboard box. So, uh, but it looks really good. You got the beautiful uh, red and then you can see there's um, this kind of, this is kind of a matte back and then we've got the spot UV gloss layer so that that kind of catches the light as well. So you get kind of a two, two layers of the, um, uh, of like reflection and you can see it here too, right there, right? So you've got the red and then you've got the spot UV black. Uh, it really pops, especially in person, as you can see there. It's got a nice um, kind of subtle, uh, almost haunting like, catching the light and, uh, and uh, you know, I guess again, just real subtle to it. It's really, really, really nice. Uh, when you move it around, it gives you this kind of ghostly visage of uh, what's there on the box. I think that's so cool. That is so cool to me. All right, so let's pop this open. Whee! Uh, no, one thing you'll notice is uh, we've had a lot of questions about this. This uh, does not push in and out. It is solidly connected to the box uh, itself. Some people were asking, everyone that sees this goes, oh, can I just pull this out? And, and no, it's, uh, it's, it's actually glued down. Um, this is a flap, a magnetic flap. Uh, so you will pop this. And then this is just the, the magnets, uh, the other side of the magnets. But it's very nice. The clasp is really strong. And you pull, pop it open. And this is the sheet that goes onto the back. Um, you'll notice there's a, even though this is a Kickstarter exclusive version of the game, there is a UPC because uh, there is a retail version, a retail bundle that we sold uh, during the Kickstarter. So retailers that partake, partook in that can uh, put, still put this on their shelves. And this is, will actually be on the back. The second this shrink craft comes off, this loose piece of paper comes out. Uh, it's got the game set up, it's got the components. Uh, it's got a nice bit of, uh, you know, what the game's about. And the player key. Uh, and then the rule book. Just wanted to open the rule book up real quick because I think the design is really nice. I think a lot of you all already saw the rule book um, during the Kickstarter campaign because we posted it and we made some changes like this one in particular. Was it this one? It was one of these images of the Prince board uh, that was a really good catch that the community gave us, which was. The Prince board should always be showing the next room that the Prince is going to be traveling to, and the original rule book had a mistake, which was the tiles were all laid out as if they were face down, and the, um, you guys did a really like super helpful thing, which was like, hey, I read the rule book, and the Prince board looks like it's saying that these should be face down, and they shouldn't be. And you're right. So we changed that. So uh, super helpful. And then there's the quick reference for the cards. And... The pre-programming at the end of the game section. Great art from Grizz Grimly. And then the story, the whole story in the back of the book of The Mask of the Red Death. And then the credits, yay! Okay, so then on top of that, we got the clock tower. And I'm gonna go in ahead and uh, open this clock tower up. Hope I didn't make a ton of you like super seasick when I just did that. Maybe I'll cut that part out, we'll see. If you didn't see a crazy camera move, it's because I cut it out. Uh, so, uh, this is also magnetic. You've got the magnet right here. And you've got a receiving magnet here. Uh, so there you go. And it just stands up. And you get the little... Looks great, man. Looks so awesome. And uh, it... Nice, uh, super thick punch piece, folds right back down. And then, of course, you're gonna reassemble when you need to. Oh yeah, let's look at the inside of this. 
uh, super cool. Like um, nice piece of the mask here uh, with this awesome background. This these uh, these pieces were really really cool. This like kind of uh, creepy uh, wallpaper was designed by using pieces of um, Grizz's art uh, clipped and then uh, I want to say like. Vector traced. Um, graphic designers did an awesome job on making this uh, a repeated pattern throughout that looks super cool. Uh, then over here, there's the art piece. Nice uh, high quality piece on a nice thick stock of paper. And it's actually like a, like paint quality paper, so it's, uh, it's, it's not too thick. Catches the color real well. There's the punch board, and uh, this got asked about a lot too. Um, you can see you, you do you do receive all the punch pieces. Um, a lot of people were requesting to be able to use both um, because they're going to paint their minis, and they really like the full color art. So they just wanted to make sure they weren't missing out. Nope, not missing out. There's your entire punch piece and your clockwise and counterclockwise for the programming at the end. The board, which you've seen in the campaign, just a you know a full big board. And then uh, well, there is your party invitations. Super cool. There's the party invitation on the side, just a nice little collectible. Then uh, these are replaced from uh, the original uh, character boards. And the original character boards uh, that will be in the, the regular retail version is just standard C2S paper. But these are, as you can see here, uh, very thick punch. I want to say these are two and a half or three each. Um, so pretty pretty thick. And that's everybody and the prints board. Let's see, actually, let's open this up real quick. Uh, should be, I'm gonna have to do this again. It's a little bit easier because these are really quite heavy, so they're, they're doing the heavy lifting for me um, of being able to, so we got that. I wanna see, there we go, this is the one I'm looking for, awesome. I love this one. I, I, I was so pleased that we were able to get Grizz to do this, all the art for this, and uh, having Edgar Allan Poe as the uh, as the prince is, is, is a really cool uh, nod to his work, and just, I love this board. Every time I see this face, look at this face. How can you not? How can you not love that? Uh, and then we've got the cards. These are the, the kind of action cards. The rumor cards, your meeples that replace your um, your mask tokens. And one thing to point out there is you can see there that the meeples are awesome. We've got the um, the full like these are you know I'll pop this open real quick. Oh, I'm spoiling the miniatures before you. I guess you're supposed to wait for those. Oh, I cannot get this bag open. Okay, there we go. So. Uh, we went ahead and engraved these and then filled them with paint. Right? They're etched, etched in, etched and painted. And they look awesome, dude. These things look so nice. Well, there's a huge upgrade over the, um, the cardboard. I mean, I love the cardboard masks because, again, they're full color and they are um, you know, just cool wacky shapes. But, like, these look so, so good. Again, this was a lot of work for our graphics designer to go in and take the art, pull this out vector it and then get it traced in. I mean, it it really paid off because these just look so good. And finally, we uh, we will pull out the minis. Here's this dude. I'm not gonna, I, I, I can't remember the names. I know this is Baron Gourmand, but I'm not gonna be able to make sure I got all of them. So here's him, pretty awesome. This is a, a bishop, bishop, what is the bishop's name? I forget. Uh, give my camera a second to figure these out. Really, camera doesn't quite do these guys justice. They, their features read much better in person. So awesome, man. He's got that grimace. Yeah. So 
Super happy with how these guys came out. Again, uh, my camera's kind of having a hard time getting to the finer details and focusing in. Uh, but these guys all look really, really great. He looks awesome. Oh, man, I'm so happy with how everything looks in this. And this guy. Look at that. And Poe. Mask looks awesome. And he just looks so good. Everything looks so good. Um, Mark Fitzpatrick uh, was a sculptor for this project. Um, and he did, uh, he did all the sculpting. He did a great job capturing Grizz's work. He worked directly with Grizz to make sure the proportions and the, the sculpts came out well. And they look awesome. Uh, Mark's actually uh, a, a 3D... Um, 3D character artist by by trade, uh, and he uh, is got a game called Dungeon Brewmaster. Dungeon Brewmaster for VR. Uh, it just launched on Steam. If you like the the sculpts from this game, you should definitely check out Dungeon Brewmaster. It's got a very fun, uh, whimsical style of art, and Mark did a lot of the sculpting for I should say 3D character design for that. The actual like po polygonal characters in the game. Uh, that's on Steam for PC and I think VR. Uh, what is the Steam one? Uh, Vive? Yeah, Vive. So he's, it's a, it's a Vive game. All right, well that's everything. Uh, oh, one cool thing about this, I shouldn't spoil it, but I'm going to, is if you take this tray out, oh, there's your clips for your standees. If you take this tray out, there's a little bit of Poe on the bottom. Uh, just a cool, like, Easter egg. Now, people who made it to the end of this 13 minute video will know they have that cool Easter egg and everyone else will just have to discover that on their own. Well, that is the, uh, that's the overview there, guys. Uh, thank you for backing the project, and we're getting real close to, sh to wrapping up production. I think they've got about another week or so, maybe two weeks of production, and everything should go out the door uh, pretty soon, probably two weeks, so everything should be hitting in, with transit time, I would, be, I would guess July, August at the latest, but I'd have to double check with the factory. I think we're going to be pretty good for July. Uh, so thank you again, I got, thank you again, everyone, for backing the game, and I can't wait to put it in your hands and have you play it because we absolutely love this game, and I think this is one of the most beautiful products we've ever made. So uh, thanks again. Bye bye.